friends, welcome back to the metal factory. This feels like a metal factory. I finished up that apple log this morning. I didn't even have the cameras on. I don't know what was going to happen. I saw two cuts hit nails on both of them. Just a disaster of a log, guys. Some really nice timber. Man, it really is frustrating when you're sawing in a log and you hit nails on every single pass. And uh, to clear up something on the last video, I had that metal detector. It's like a hand wand metal detector. I got that at Woodcraft years ago, and it only detects like a half inch or a quarter inch down or something like that. It's really used for wood going through a planer. That's really the best application for it, not logs. But they make a metal detector just for logs. It's about $2,500, and it checks all the way through the log, but it really doesn't tell you where the metal is, so you still have to saw into it to find it, unless it's sticking out of the bark. And as many times as I hit metal up here, which is very rare, I've not hit any nails since I moved here over a year ago. It's been a long time since I hit any metal in trees. I think I hit some white oak metal about two years ago over at the other farm I used to work at some. That's the last time I hit nails. So it's really hard to justify that cost because most of my logs, 99% of them come from loggers now up in the forest. And they very, very rarely have, you know, have nails in it because the loggers, if they see signs of nails on the end cut, they'll keep on cutting up most of the time to get rid of that before they even bring it out to the mill. So, I probably won't get a metal detector. You know, I don't do a lot of yard trees. So here's the two things I want to cover here real fast, and then we'll get on to saw milling. And we've got more apple to saw, but these are limbs. I think we'll be okay. Famous last words. We'll probably hit metal on every pass, but you never know. Here's a blade I just hit metal on. I know that's a shocker. I'm just gonna show you guys how the nail damages it. Do a little contrast back there. This may come through a lot clearer when I put the footage up on my computer. But the end of those teeth are all broken off right there, guys. Every single one of them are. And as you can see, once you hit metal, it just ruins the blade. Ruins it, you gotta take it off and put a new one on there. And that's really frustrating when you put a new one on there to begin with. So I can regrind these blades, there's no problem with that. But in my opinion, they are never as sharp as they are when they're grounded for the first time. And what I'm trying to say is, if I use that blade four or five times and never hit metal and just, you know, re-grind the profile every time, it's gonna be a lot sharper than it is if you hit metal with it. Cause it, you lose so much material right there. That's probably about three or four grinding trips right there in the amount of metal that's removed when it breaks off the tip right there. You gotta grind a lot to get that edge back. So you can salvage the blade it just makes it worth about half of what it should be. You may, I'll, I'll probably get two sharpenings out of that before I'm grinding down so much the gullet's about gone. But some people have better luck with it. You know, it's just the luck I have here with sharpening and hitting metal, you know. And I have another question, do you charge the customer when you hit metal? And I do. A lot of people charge the full price of the blade, about $20, $25. I usually charge half that because most of the time I can reuse that blade, but I lose half the life of it. So I think $10 is pretty fair since I can grind them here. And, uh, but you can charge 20 bucks, you know, whatever you wanna do, some people will pay it. And really, honestly, I probably should charge 20 because you're ruining the whole blade pretty much. You get one or two more sharpenings and it's done. But I guess I'm a nice guy, I charge $10. All right, so this right here is probably the best slab that we got out of this. This one's eight quarter. You can see the black area right there. That's because a nail was in there. I pulled that one out. Over here, you can see the same thing. That metal will stain the wood. It does the same thing it does to oak. Kind of interesting there. But this one's a shorter piece. I went ahead and cut off the rod on the bottom. There was four nails down there. So I went ahead and just cut that off and got rid of it. And up here on the top, I cut off this section as well because there was two nails in it and I couldn't even get to those, so I just cut it off. But it makes for a really nice short slab. It's about 36 inches long. It's about nine quarter on the thickness, I think. But I tell you, when the customer takes this with him, he's taking all this wood with him to dry. I would be very careful when I flatten this because there's probably gonna be a few more nails hiding down in here somewhere but it's probably gonna be worth the effort because check out this figure right here in the middle. 
It's hard to tell. You got this washboard on here where the blade got damaged, but there's some really nice crotch feeder in there. And we'll throw some water on this here in a minute and get a good look at it. I think it's going to be the best slab out of all of them. So here's the other boards. These are all four quarter and one of them is a seven quarter right here in the front. This apple's gorgeous. It's nice stuff, but you can see the stains. You know, that black stain in there caused by the metal. Now there's a nail right there. I'll try to get my lumber crayon and circle these before he picks this stuff up so he can pull them out later. Right there's another one. Right there's another one right there. Just full of nails, guys, but some really nice timber, though. Got that rod on the bottom. I would probably just cut that off and have 38 inch or 40 inch long slabs. Some really good stuff. got three pieces of apple left and they're all three limbs I got the first one on the mill right here it's pretty small another one over in the loading arms and another short one over there behind it and what I'm probably gonna do with these three is just go ahead and saw them into squares because the only thing they'll be good for is really turning blanks or something like that I don't think I would use this for boards those limbs have so much stress in them they can really move around a lot when you start sawing into them. That's why I don't fool with them a whole lot. But this is a customer tree, so we'll do what he wants. So we'll go ahead and saw this into a square, try to get it as big as possible. And I'm assuming he'll make some turning blades out of this. friends let's walk through the swamp here rained all night last night and uh go check on the kiln see how it's doing it's been running for about 24 hours so we should be seeing some water coming out there's mom cat mama's out here with us today mama i know it's wet everywhere ain't it so back here behind the kiln i got a bucket that collects the water that comes out as the wood dries Not too bad right there. Got some water coming out. Mama, that's barbed wire and don't you be drinking that water. All right, friends, on the sawmill, this is the last of the apple, thank goodness. This is a short one. I had to manhandle it to get it up there. It's only about 42 inches long. 
had to use a little two by four in here to help clamp it. These short logs can be a pain, guys. They're worth it in the end. You get some nice stuff out of them. But sometimes it takes longer to load them and get them clamped than it does to saw them. But we may have some interesting stuff going on here. We got two limbs coming off and a nice crotch right there in the middle. So as long as there's no metal in here, this should go pretty fast. And it should produce some really nice wood in there. We'll see what happens. Will my call in? Will my wagon in leave? The falling of leaves. Colorado, Ridgeway Road, you seen my valley of dreams. Mama's gone now. All we have is our hearts and dimes for the road. The hills are starving, dust is all that 